All right, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the process, that the, the archaic process that I use to put my pieces together. Uh, one of the things that makes me fit well with the sorcery product is that it's highly desirable to be a traditional painter. So traditional painting and method is, is, has always been a big part of what I am. I do very little digital work on my art. Basically, I just scan my traditional material and send it in that way. Occasionally, I'll be asked to tweak a color or uh, push something back digitally, but usually it's, it's just a straight scan of my traditional work. Just as far as how something comes into being in, in a sorcery card in particular, uh, I have all the components here of buried treasure from the alpha set. So when I got this assignment, it was uh, January of uh, 2022. And uh, some of the very first sketches I did were uh, all about the chest. And I tried to examine different ideas about uh, how I wanted to display that. And like these were a couple of just rough experimental ideas that had a treasure that was like hidden behind a stone wall. Um, and I don't know if it's because I spoke to somebody to get clarity on the concept or if it was just that I abandoned that idea, but I came back to a chest that had been buried. So, um, after doing a couple of more pencil roughs, I came towards this idea. And to feature the chest with a couple of uh, like scallywag pirate types in the background and uh, a couple of pieces of spilled treasure around the periphery, um, I decided that this was where I wanted to go for direction. The next thing I did with buried treasure was I decided that in order to get the perspective on the chest correct and to understand uh, what some treasures around the outside of the chest might look like I made a trip to a local thrift shop and so this is that same rough sketch that you just saw in my sketchbook with uh, a couple of items including like a few rolls of quarters a silver dish um, this kind of like, I don't know, it, it's been pointed out that it looks a lot like Aladdin's lamp, but it's really like a candy dish and it's got uh, some fake pearls on it and a couple of other things and this uh, pitcher and all of this stuff I, I picked up at a thrift store for probably about 30, 35 bucks and I brought it back to my basement where I have this wooden beer crate from 1933, which I keep some firewood in, and I use that as my stand-in chest to get my proportions right as far as size and shape and, and lighting. And I printed this out at eight and a half by 11 and put a piece of tracing paper over it, and then I modified it to this. But you can see that the angles on the chest line up right, and the picture's there, and the, the chest is there, the plate is there. It's all, all came from this reference that I shot. And then this sketch was what I sent on for approval. And the one thing that changed uh, from this sketch to where I started painting was the size of the figures. I was asked to make them a little smaller so they were less important than the treasure itself. And uh, that went along and this is what became of all of that. But um, that's all the elements, and uh, some of these things are still floating around the studio right now. And I just, I really love the warmth of this piece. I love the, the wood structure and, and uh, some of the, just the wear on that. The iron bands came out really nice. I was very happy with the, the, the way that I was able to get the bends in the metal to look right. And uh, having a lot of those props just made the piece um, more solid made it more believable. It's definitely something I do when the situation is right for it. There are other products that I've worked on where the request for an image is more, it sounds more like you want, they want to see a movie sequence. They want so many elements and so much displayed. 
but uh, the, the request for something like buried treasure, usually it, if there's an understanding from the client that I can achieve something that's going to represent buried treasure, and if the information that they give me, and in this case it was nothing more than the title, is sufficient for me to grow ideas from, that's usually where the best art comes from because it's allowing me to be at my most creative rather than to be restricted by a lot of guidelines that aren't necessarily going to make a better piece of art.